Hey there, Dr. Missy Hood here. <clears throat> and normally I wouldn't get on here until tomorrow. I do the shows on Tuesdays and Fridays for the 15 minute rev, but um, God has been talking to me the last two days. <clears throat> and I apologize for that too. Seems like that's going around too with the flu and stuff, but trying to stave that off. But anyway, the Lord's been talking to me for the last two days. And, and I, today I'm, I'm troubled by the prophetic word because of the severity of it. <clears throat> and I've been hearing that something significant is going to be happening in June. Um, and so I, to me, I'm, I'm an optimist usually, and I'm looking for the goodness in what's happening until the last two days when I started sensing it's a severe warning for a severe shift that's coming this June. <clears throat> and so this is the word that the Lord has been giving to me the last two days. And I'm going to read it off to you because I think it's, it's pertinent enough to where I gave it its own time outside of the 15 minute rev so that you would think about it and go pray about it <clears throat> see if it applies to you. And why do I say that? Because so many people think that they're okay right now. They think that they're walking are going to be okay coming forward and that they're coming into the new where God is taking the bride. <clears throat> but that's not so. That's not so because so many people are still staying in their old ways or in the old by and by. And your ways aren't God's ways. And so we all hear about revival coming. We hear about um, the latter glory coming. And I believe that this is a prequel to that, that God's readying us for that, for those who choose to participate. And so he's not going to be late, but will you, will you be late to the feast, the marriage slam at the supper? And will you be going in with the groom or will you stay? Will you be arrogant enough to stay in your same old ways thinking you're going to go through? And so, yeah, I really, really think it is imperative that I give you this word uh, separate from the Rev again, because I feel like God is really driving some points home today. And he's talking about topics or the elephant in the room. <clears throat> and they're topics that the church normally doesn't feel comfortable talking about. Um, it, it's, it's two in particular. I think that he's putting his finger on, but one in particular, uh, and maybe three, you could consider three actually, but one in particular within the three, um, where I just feel like God is fed up. He is done. He is not going to be used by people who just want to do what they do. And you just think you're going to come through and do things your own way. Well, I don't care if you're a leader or a sheep. He is ready for you to be who you say you are. You, you say what you mean. You mean what you say. You either operate in true nobility, true uh, virtue, or you get to stay outside. And a lot of people are going to be really, really surprised when this happens. This was prophesied last year by prophets coming into 2024. And, and I'm really shocked. I don't know why I am, but I guess I'm shocked by the severe narrowing of the spiritual laws. That's what I believe is happening in June, the severe narrowing of the laws. And <clears throat> what concerns me about this too, and this is what concerns me the most, I think, is that because for something of this magnitude to happen, it makes me wonder how God's going to make or allow it to happen. If it's going to be through some nationwide catastrophe or something like that, I'm not speaking that, <clears throat> but while I read this to you, I want you to consider that. And I want you to ask yourself, honestly, have I been true? Have I been honest with God? Have I been honest with me about my heart condition with where God's trying to bring me into? Because if you're not, Trust me, you can, can try to joke around or you can try to uh, you can try to make light of it. You can try to disregard it. Stick your head in the sand like a camel thinking it's going to bypass you. But it didn't bypass the Israelites. They had to uh, go in their houses in Egypt and the death angel passed by. I'm not saying that's happening, but this is that significant. So I'm, I'm hoping you're going to listen today and, and take into account if this applies to you. This is what he said. The title is, the bride, and this is the significant word that he pointed out to me, true moral standards upheld, leaving selfish systems behind to operate in true nobility. Either who you are, <clears throat> you're who you say you are, or you're, you're fraud. That's just how this is. Because what you do in secret, 
will find you out. God will flush it out, Ephesians 5, 11. And June is that flushing season. This is what he said. The days where the true prophets go into the house of those just wanting to be entertained is over. It's absolutely over. Because a truth prophet's job is to correct and redirect so that the houses, my houses, said the Lord, can now come into order. God's order if they want to be a part of the God's true bride and come inside. So this attitude of I can't correct you because we're friends is over. It's done, prophet. <clears throat> if you're going to still want to abide with me and continue to be used by me because my spiritual laws are narrowing. And as of June 2024, the Lord says, I'll be shutting some doors. Doors of opportunity and doors of finance. That's a big one. That affects us all where man used to get away with things, but now I'll be allowing him to see his own ways are most definitely not my own because I'm demanding a wife and a bride who's going to stand with me in, in moral integrity and pure good seeds with good seeds sown. Man's ways are not my ways, says the Lord. And so seeds sown in truth so that those hearts can come through in the new, <clears throat> be seated beside me in heavenly places. So that my entire kingdom can see her for who she truly is, a bride of virtue. So all of you still mixing my holy with your leaven. You're now being put on notice. You'll either change and be changed. You'll be left outside and will quick, quickly find yourselves lacking the power and finances needed in order to stay ahead of the darkness quickly encroaching upon you. This is because your adversary thinks himself to be king. But what he forgets is that those that truly serve me in truth and light are speaking only what I say and see. <clears throat> That's the true king's decree. And so my words then take flight. They never fall to the ground. They're safe and sound and arrive at their destination just like I spoke them to ensure that those targets were transformed apart from the fake enemy's words that cause stagnation. Lord says, I'm not a stagnant God. I do not waste my words like man, thinking his words will stand until he finds himself in an unholy destination. And while we're talking about hard topics, the Lord says, now I'm really going to get up into these places with you to show you who's a liar and who's true. He said, let's get into seed, says the Lord, because I'm about to impede upon your thinking and continuing to do what's right in your own eyes instead of what I've shown you for some time. <clears throat> As you know, man lives in a season of seed plus time equals harvest. But many of you forsake me without reason. And I see your heart's part because it's forsaken me from the start, not to mention my workers. You realize that my word says that when you listen to a prophet, you're blessed. And when you sow into a prophet, you're blessed because you are receiving fresh manna to keep you on track in the way that you should go. Even my prophetic teachers are people that I use to sow and show those hearts who want to know me at deeper levels. But now, <clears throat> as I bring you back to me, for those who want to be used to change history, what I'm seeing is a bunch of users and takers. And those who want my glory in their atmospheres, pretending that they're me or those that I chose to use to speak through, which makes them liars and thieves because they behave in ways unbecoming to what real truth seekers achieve. A heart full of real truth knows the only way it can go is to sow because in sowing those seeds, bring that heart into knowing the way into a holy reality. But now what I see are corrupt hearts trying to take shortcuts when there are none thinking I won't interrupt their low moral standards that they've implied <clears throat> and then cause heaven and earth to collide or thinking in their deception that they're going to climb my holy mountain and steal what I would have gladly given had they only obeyed and believed disregarding my protocols for which are within my laws and are always there to help man achieve all things so they could enter in and begin again with me. 
So as I move you into this new season, your new responsibility, what should have been this way all along, is to uphold my moral standards, my honor, if you truly say you're with me. Pulling you out of the old by and by, where I'm demanding that the excuses to negate them stop lest I disregard your clock, causing you to lose track with me in time, hindering you from entering into the divine. And with that, I have a question, says the Lord, for those of you who are so sure you're on track. But what makes you think that you can force my workers, my leaders, my bride to keep feeding you from the inside and working for free? Do you not think that you're not a part of this family? When I tell you that a family member who refuses to take care of their own is like an ingrate. They're disowned. But yet you would treat my house with such contempt, says the Lord. How dare thee? And I told the widow, I told her, because she gave with all of her might, M-I-T-E, M-I-G-H-T. Levels of might are at different levels. We all operate on different spiritual pages. So he knows where you're standing at this place in history. <clears throat> but the Lord says to ask you, do you work for free? No. Because I command all of humanity to work since Adam fell, as was this was part of the deal when I took keys back from hell. But did I not tell all of humanity that if they brought a tenth of their seed into my storehouses, that I would fill them up, press down, shaking together, overflowing in good measure, and that you wouldn't have room enough to contain it all? <coughs> and this isn't just for one, any one house. It's for my bride. It's for her house. The houses where you come inside because you're sensing the power now. And so everybody wants to have a piece of the pie, says the Lord, but you're not willing to get out of your old by and by. So your ways are a contemptuous thing to me, says the Lord. It's offensive. How dare you come near me? This is why I told Moses, leave them at the base of the mountain. Lest I have to strike them there. But it's not part of the law that I want you to read. It's this part that should help you to truly believe. It's in what I will hold back, that I will hold back the hand of the devourer from your seed. But why would you care about that, says the Lord? Why would you care? Do you understand, child, that in order for anything in your lives to grow, you must have seeds? Just like you would have a natural garden. Seeds are what I've had you sow. Seeds of your words, your faith, your belief in order for kingdom and dreams to be achieved. <clears throat> but what does the enemy continually try to steal from you? It's my seed that I'm depositing within you as you listen by faith to me through my workers, my seed. You're listening to me as I deposit myself into you. But when you fail to uphold a spiritual principle, a spiritual law, you give the enemy legal rights to steal that portion of my spirit that would have helped you to continue on your journey forward in time into the divine. Remember, when you listen to a prophet, you're blessed. So it's a strategy that I've given you. It's a test. So it's the portion of seed I was depositing within you to help you believe and discern the seasons that I'm moving you through. Therefore, you become your own worst enemy because you are now partnering with the enemy instead of partnering with me. Galatians 6, 7, you reap what you sow. Do you sow good seed or bad seed? Or do you even sow seed at all, says the Lord? <clears throat> you sow nothing. Some of you sow nothing. Your spirit man stays stagnant and you do not move forward in time because you do not truly believe. Matter of fact, you believe more in your own ways than you do me. And I've grown weary of the ways of man. And he who chooses the way that he thinks he should go, thinking to live independently, forsaking the ancient of days, and only running to the house of God when Satan gets in the way or begins to steal life from him or the things you legally give over to him. 
Do you realize, child, that when I give myself to your heart, your garden, it's so that I can impart kingdom to your life? Life to grow while you sow into the stream that I planted you in so that you can then plant your natural seeds into those waters, living waters, <clears throat> which help to cover you while you go out and do what I've called you to do. Sowing your seeds then allows me to help you spiritually continually growing to where you eventually wind up in the place your seed matured you into. A harvest that no man has ever seen or known because your heart chose to grow forward into my overflow because you chose obedience, which is better than sacrifice. It's better than the fat of rams. First Samuel 15, 22. But it's a bad heart condition that I'm speaking to, says the Lord, to the selfish sluggards who use and drain my house, its workers. But the Lord says, right now, this June, I'm about to, to deal with you. Because as of June 2024, everything that you used to do, thinking it would bring you into the more, is about to be shut off, says the Lord, like a dam whose waters no longer flow. <clears throat> Until you decide the way in which you want to walk in, with me or with my enemy. Deciding whose moral compass you will follow. And to those of you who continue to falsely accuse that all my house wants is your money, you're about to be removed from those places of worship to be replaced by those who truly want to follow me. Because it's an honor to a virtuous heart who believes, just like it was to the widow who gave her all, her might. <clears throat> she believed. So it wasn't the amount that helped her sight. It was her honor. You're entering into a higher place of honor says the Lord, you better get it right. Because as of June, you're fixing to see that I'm serious about this reality, says the Lord. Her honor is what she gave to me. But the poor in spirit, they make poor excuses and then don't want to hear truth. So they dismiss me thinking I won't place my finger on them or withhold or hinder them from entering in. Remember, again, I'm about to close the dams because I'm that flowing stream and I am the overseer of things and who steps into them, just like I did with the man at the pool of Bethesda. I said, pick up your mat and walk. It's time to quit talking and talk. So for those of you refusing to change, this will be a hard season that will rearrange all aspects of your life unless you choose to do as I do, which will give you life. Because becoming a virtuous bride means you stop being liars and thieves. Because at that point, you understand that I'm the one who's employed you. You're not giving to them. You're giving to me. <clears throat> Hence, my maturity season has started, says the Lord. You're either going to choose to do what you do or you're going to participate with me. If you allow heaven and earth to collide so that I might bring you out of the old by and by, I promise you, I will help you to never forget this moment in history. And you won't repeat history as your forefathers have done. You'll create a new history. The way that it was meant to run. In Jesus' name. I'm going to leave you with that. I know that that's intense, but... um. That's what I feel like he's telling me for right now for this season. I do sense very, very strongly these roads, this narrowing of the spiritual roads or these spiritual laws are going to become very pronounced this June. And that's ironically, if you think about it, it's right before the ninth of Av. So you've got from now until the ninth of Av to get cleaned up and to get these things off of you that keep you from doing what you know you should do. That's our responsibility from here till then. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Love you guys. Bye-bye.